Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. In my last video we had a look at the netcode of Battlefield 1, where I explained how its high frequency update areas work, what delays players are affected by and much more. I also talked about the network graph but I didn't go into all the details. So that's what I will do today in this video, which is essentially an update of the network graph explanation that I did for Battlefield 4 in 2015. So first of all the network graph is available on both console and PC. To enable it you just have to go to Options, Gameplay, Advanced and then switch the network performance graph setting from Height to Show. When we now look at the network graph then the first value that we see here is the tick rate. That's how many calculations or simulations are done per second. And as you surely know, higher tick rates mean that the game feels more responsive, there is less additional delay added on top of your ping to the game server and when you lose a packet occasionally then this is less of an issue at higher rates. Now, at the time that I make this video here the default tick rate of Battlefield 1 is 60Hz on PC and sadly just 30Hz on console. Unlike Battlefield 4 it's not possible anymore to have a game server on PC which runs at more than 60Hz, like 120 or even 144Hz. This is just one of many features that are missing in Battlefield 1's server rental. So the tick rate value in the graph allows you to check which tick rate is active on the server. Next is the server tick, which is measured in milliseconds. This value here tells us how long the server needs to process a single tick. So at a tick rate of 60Hz the server has to do 60 simulations per second, which means that there is a new simulation step every 16.66 milliseconds. And at 30Hz it's a new simulation every 33.33 milliseconds. So the faster the server can finish such a tick, the earlier the clients will receive new data from the server, which means that the game feels more responsive. So this value allows us to judge the server's performance, where low values mean that it is doing well. Now the server's performance is still fine when this value goes past 12 milliseconds at 60 Hz and 15 milliseconds at 30 Hz. However, you will probably notice that the hit registration feels less responsive then. Once it starts to get close to 16 milliseconds at 60 Hz or 33 milliseconds at 30 Hz, then not only will the game feel less responsive, but you might also start to encounter problems like rubber banding and increased delay for the hit registration, or gameplay elements freeze and then start to move again. Once the server's performance starts to become a problem, you will see this yellow icon here. When the server degrades even further and fails to process a tick inside that 16.66 or 33.33 milliseconds timeframe, then the icon will show up in red. So in short, this icon tells you that the server has a performance problem and the only thing that you can do is leave the server and join a different one. Next up is latency, which unlike the ping in the scoreboard does not show you the result of an ICMP echo request. The value that you see here is based on the game data that is exchanged by the Battlefield 1 game client and the Battlefield 1 server instance. So it's normal that this value here will differ slightly from the ping in the scoreboard. The latency value is also driving this performance indicator here. When your latency is higher than 170 milliseconds then it will show up in yellow, which means that you have to expect some issues. And when your latency goes past 220 milliseconds then the icon and the text in the network graph will turn red which means that your bad connection to the server will have a serious impact on your experience. Now, while I really like that DICE uses a color code to tell you how severe the issue is, I have to say that 170 milliseconds are way too high for the yellow icon. In my opinion the yellow icon should show up at 100 milliseconds and the red one at 170 milliseconds, because these are very bad pings for a first person shooter and you will already encounter issues at 100 milliseconds. Next up is network variation, which tells us how stable your internet connection is. When your ping or latency is going up and down a lot, then this has a very bad impact on your online experience, as the game then constantly has to adapt to your changing latency. So when your latency goes up and down by more than 7 milliseconds, then you will get the yellow icon. And when it changes by more than 10 milliseconds, then the icon and the text will turn red. Then we have packet loss which displays the sum of both incoming and outgoing packets that did not reach their destination, which is obviously very bad in an online game. So when more than 1% of your packets disappear then you will see the yellow icon. And when more than 5% of the packets get lost then the icon and the text in the network graph show up in red. Then we have the extrapolation offset which does not drive any performance icon. 
This value tells us how much the simulation of the client differs from the simulation done by the server. At 30 Hz you are fine as long as this value stays below 40 milliseconds, while at 60 Hz the limit is 20 milliseconds. When the value is higher than that then this is not good, but what is really bad is when you see negative numbers here. What causes this value to change are stability problems with your internet connection like a high network variation value or when you suddenly run out of bandwidth. What is also not good is a fluctuating frame rate where client stalls or freezes are really bad. Then we have the downstream bandwidth value which only shows you how many kilobytes per second are currently received by your game client. And lastly we have the client's receive rate. Now usually the game will receive data from the server at the same rate as the tick rate. So normally this value will be the same as the server tick value. However when your frame rate drops below 49 fps then your receive rate will also be reduced to 30 hertz because for your system to get the most out of 60 hertz it also needs to be able to display 60 frames per second. This is also why you see the low fps warning icon here once your frame rate drops below 60. So when you see this icon then this means that you do not have an optimal experience as your frame rate is below the server's tick rate. And so you might not even receive 60 updates per second from the server when you have 48 fps or even less. So I once more have to disagree with the values chosen by DICE because while it is okay that the yellow icon shows up once your frame rate is below the display's refresh rate, I strongly believe that the red icon must show up once the frame rate causes that the game lowers your client's receive rate which currently happens at 48 fps. I think that it's really important that the player knows that he is now only receiving data at 30 hertz and not at 60 hertz. So when you see that icon then this means that you will not have an optimal experience as your frame rate is below the server's tick rate and so you might not even receive 60 updates per second from the server when you have 48 fps or even less. But this value is not only affected by your frame rate. When your internet connection is unable to handle the amount of data created by receiving 60 updates per second, then Battlefield 1 will also lower the client's receive rate, which you can see here where I artificially limited the bandwidth that the game is allowed to use. Now there is one more information icon that you will not see in Battlefield 1 unless servers with a tick rate of more than 60 Hz become available, and that's this one here. This icon tells you that your display's refresh rate is lower than the server's tick rate, which obviously will not happen as long as we don't have servers that support tick rates higher than 60 Hz. So if you would join a 120 Hz server while using a display refresh rate of 60 Hz, then this icon here would show up and tell you that your display's refresh rate is lower than the server's tick rate, which means that you don't get the most out of that high tick rate. Now, as you've surely noticed before, there is an option which allows you to disable all these performance icons that warn you about server performance issues, high latency, too much latency variation, packet loss, a too low frame rate and so possibly about receiving just 30 instead of 60 updates per second. So while you technically can hide these icons, I urge you to leave them on because otherwise you will lose all that info that helps you to understand why you encounter issues while playing Battlefield 1. Now what can you do when you encounter ping spikes or packet loss? What you should avoid at all costs are Wi-Fi and power line as these are prone to interference which then leads to packet loss and high latency variation. If 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi is the only way for you to connect to the internet then you should make sure that your Wi-Fi is on channel 1, 6 or 11 and you should always choose the channel which has the least networks on it. I will put a link in the description to the website that you see here which will help you to optimize your Wi-Fi at home. Also did you ever call the support of your internet service provider and were told that you should try to switch your router off and on again? This is actually a good suggestion as these consumer grade products do tend to fail the longer they are powered up. A super easy but brute force solution to never have to restart your router manually again is to use a power socket timer. Just set it to something like 4 in the morning where it will then cut the power and force the router to restart. Speaking of the router, probably the most common cause of latency or ping spikes is network congestion, which means that someone or something else eats up all your available up or downstream bandwidth and so the time sensitive data of your online game gets delayed. If this happens inside your local network then this is also referred to as buffer bloat which you can test on this site here. You will also find the link to that site in the description down below. 
Now there are many so-called gaming routers out there which are very expensive but in most cases only provide an either very limited or overly complicated quality of service feature. If you are looking for a router that simply gets the job done, then I can highly recommend the Edge Router X which costs just 50 euros and comes with a quality of service feature called Smart Queue that prioritizes traffic from real-time applications so that their data does not get delayed while someone else in your network is consuming your entire up or downstream bandwidth. So no more ping spikes when someone starts a download, watches Netflix or when a smartphone starts to upload photos and videos to the cloud. You can also see here how enabling SmartQ results in a perfect score in the buffer blow test. If you want to know more about the edge routers and how to configure them, then you can find a link to my setup guide in the description down below. Um, recently I've heard from quite a few people that my last videos didn't show up in their subscription box. So if you would like to get an alert when I upload a new video, then you can click that little bell icon right here below the video. Or you might want to follow me on Twitter or Facebook where I will share my videos and what I'm currently up to. So I hope that you enjoyed this closer look at the Battlefield 1 network performance graph and the performance icons. If you like this kind of content where I take a look at the inner workings of video games and show you how these affect your experience, then you can help me to cover the costs of this channel by supporting me through Patreon. The link is in the description below. Also if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.